Welcome back. The Steber Craft organisation who built the boat that you just saw on the show are regarded as, as icons of the Australian boat building industry, particularly for large boats, commercial and pleasure boats, which stay on the water and are moored. Now a man who's regarded equally as an icon uh, in trailer boats is John Haynes. John has been in the business of designing, manufacturing and racing a vast range of boats for many, many years now and his Haynes signature range are regarded as top of the line as far as Australian design and built boats are concerned. And they've also, as we'll see in just a moment, made their mark overseas. Now it's not always easy to get John to hold still long enough for an interview, but I was able to do that a couple of days ago when we looked at his latest fishing boat offering, the 5.75. And I asked John how come Haynes Signature had transitioned from a range of fast pleasure and ski boats into a range of purpose designed fishing boats. Well, of course we had that recession that we had to have and uh... And, and the, the um, fisherman was the person who was buying the boat at the time. So we Pleasure had to boats build... went sold. Well, the, the average family guy who uh, bought a boat to go occasionally boating in, um, he sort of said, well, we'll wait till after the recession goes away and then, yeah. and then we'll buy the boat then. But the fisherman, he was, he's, uh, he's pretty keen and pretty yeah. fanatical about his sport, so he goes fishing. Now, Haynes Pursuit Fishing uh, is something that you established a while back. This is the very latest model in the, in the, the Haynes Pursuit fishing range. Mm. Tell me how it differs from the others. Well, we've, uh, we, we learned a lot uh, from building those other models, and, and all we learned in those, those models has been put into this particular boat, and the input from, from uh, journalists and um, users, fishermen, fishermen and users, yes. Yeah. So, so how does it differ? Tell me some of its features. Well, this, this boat is, is a stern drive, but the outboard version of this boat uh, utilises absolutely every skerrick of space that uh, is available. We have a, a fold-down gate in front of the outboard well, uh, so that the outboard well in a normal boat would take up, say, 30 inches or nearly a metre of, uh, of longitudinal space. Uh, this boat takes up less than half a metre. Right. Um, as an outboard version. Then we have a live bait tank situated to the uh, to the uh, starboard side, um, port side, sorry, and we have battery mounting uh, on the starboard side. Right. So all of the machinery is kept down the back and well away and is sort of moved out the back of the boat effectively, because that really is what's important to fishermen, is, it's floor space, isn't it? Well, yeah, f uh, cockpit space, usable cockpit space. Yeah. And we have uh, um, rod racks in the, in, the, in the side boxes for storage, we have um, self bailing cockpit. Um, we have uh, areas un below the side boxes where your toes can, can fit under so that you're not uh, almost falling out of the boat before you get to the side. Yeah, and you're not, you're not messing your back up by trying to lean no. forward at 30 degrees. And if you're leaning over to, to gaff a fish or, or net a fish or tag a fish, um, you feel very stable in there because yeah. your, your toes are, there's a, a non-slip area for your toes to, to grab hold of and yeah. you can actually lean right over and touch the water without any uh, instability. Without any instability. Because all of those things are very subtle features, but they're things that have become expected by Australian fishermen in the boats that they buy. Uh, I would suggest that because of the fact that most of our fishing is done either in offshore or in fairly relatively choppy estuary conditions, we've developed a range of fishing boats that are unique to Australia. Well, the fishing boat has to be reasonably um, not a compromise, but but it has to be reasonably flexible in as much as versatile. Yeah, very versatile. Yeah. The, the guys will go fishing; they will want to go when it's good weather. They will want to go offshore, yeah. uh, so the boat's got to perform well offshore. It's got to be dry, safe, and and uh, and yeah. comfortable to ride. Uh, then, uh, in in estuary fishing, it's got to have all of those other little yeah. things that they require to yeah. uh, to go estuary fishing, yeah. and also have the shallow draft and the other the other qualities that make it suitable for estuary fishing. Hmm. Now one other aspect that you mentioned comfort there before, it's, it's not necessarily usual in an Australian fishing boat of this size to see a comfortable V-berth forward cabin which can be locked off from the rest of the boat. You and I agree, we've spoken about this before, that when you, particularly when you're offshore fishing or if you're in a, a large estuary and you're there for hours and hours, and if you have the kids or the wife along, that really is a huge asset to have that comfortable, safe, cosy area. In There's the a lot of, lot of female, the female gender like to fish too, yes. but they also like their comforts. Yes, exactly. Um, we have a, a, a portable um, toilet is, is standard equipment in this boat. Yeah. Um, that's uh, more for the ladies. Uh, yeah. Uh, and a privacy curtain as well. 
Exactly. Which is good. Yeah. Now, tell me, you've done a couple of other interesting things with this boat. One of them is you've, you've looked at automotive practice to a degree and made the under windscreen dash area black. Yeah, well that's, um, if you have a white dashboard, and um, we've some of our uh, earlier boats, all of our earlier boats had that, um, uh, that compromises your vision on a sunny day because the white reflects off the underside of the windshield, particularly the type of windshield we have on this, which is a uh, curved armour plate windshield, glass, glass windshield, yeah. And uh, that compromises your vision and, and with a bit of salt on the outside of the screen. Yes. Very difficult, uh, very to, difficult see. to see. Yeah. You find yourself having to stand up. But the black eliminates all those problems, mm. which is a great way to go. And I notice you've also got a, a, a pattern on it to, to further take the gloss away from yeah. it. Yeah, it's just a sort of a pattern to stop the any any gl uh, reflection, uh, yeah. reflective glare. Yeah. Would you like to show us some of the features of that dash? Sure, Chris. Uh, on, on, the, uh, on this side we have a um, moulded ice boxes, uh, or you could be used for storage. Which, as we're doing but it's it now. insulated. It, it's it's and it drains over the side. Right. So any of any, when the, when the ice melts, of course, it goes back overboard. Um, you have grab handles, which can be used in a seated position, in a standing position. You have also a rail around the windshield. Yeah, stiffens up the top. We have these uh, non-slip patterns on the top of the dashboard, and that's so that we can move forward by opening the windshield. We also have a step. Right. Moulded in so that you can, you can step straight up right, through the windshield if you design to go that way right. rather than up through the forward hatch. Well, that's unusual. And um, certainly enhances access to the foredeck. We also have the, uh, the dashboard is actually dropped down in, in the area where the electronics right. are to go. And this, well. this is a, a Lawrence LMS 350, which is a sounder as well right. as a uh, GPS system. And the, the dashboard is just a uh, um, Shaped, but yes. the, 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 to to take uh, the, the required amount of instruments. That and you I have. like the white-faced instruments too. Yes, they're optional. Yes, they as do. are some of the other features. Yes, but uh, uh, that all works uh, very ergonomically. Thanks, John. Some dimensions on the 575F. She has an overall length of 5.85 metres, a beam of 2.35 metres, a dead rise varying from 33 to 21 degrees, and inbuilt fuel of 185 litres. Now, Australian fishermen and boat owner did some very detailed fuel consumption tests on this boat, and the results are quite interesting. At 3,000 engine revs, she did 45 kilometres an hour, used 23.45 litres an hour, giving a range of 340 kilometres from the 185 litres. At 4,000 revs, she, she did 63 kilometres an hour for 35.92 litres an hour and a range of 305 kilometres. And flat out at 5,000 revs and 80 kilometres an hour, she used 65.38 litres an hour and did uh, 220 uh, range, 220 kilometres range from the 185 litres. Now this boat uh, really uh, sets itself up as state-of-the-art fishing boat for a Australia in the, in the mid-1990s. Again, it's a tour de force for John Haynes, a man who's given Australia a huge number of magnificent boats. The 575F from Haynes Signature. We'll be back right after this break.